And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Dragon Scales from Arcane Wonders and Richard Launius. Dragon Scales is the newest addition to the Dice Tower Essentials line. Dice Tower Essentials line is a line of games that I think are really great games, and I want to see them either get printed for the first time or reprint it. In this case, it's a reprinting of an older game called Dragon Rampage, originally published by Eagle Griffin Games, a push-your-luck dice-style game that I really enjoyed about fighting a dragon or running from the dragon. It had a few uh, things that I would have liked to see changed. They actually were changed in this edition. But take that in mind that I have a stake in this game. At the same time, there's no way on earth that I'm pretending I like this game because I really do like it. That's why it's in the line to begin with. But you can say, in some sense, I'm biased. Dragon Scales is a game in which each person is a villain. You're fighting a dragon and fighting over the loot. You're really kind of cooperating to kill the dragon, but not really. You wouldn't mind seeing the other people eliminate it and fall and lose and get slapped around or what have you. Here's how it plays. So as I said in this game, you're one of these evil villains and you're going to be here starting at the entrance fighting this three-headed dragon. The three-headed dragon is going to have a bunch of cubes placed on each of the three heads for the dragon and there's going to be more cubes if you're playing with more players. Each player is going to get a set of seven dice that for their player color along with a custom deck of cards for that player. These cards are going to be different per uh, character. There's also some dice here for attacking the dragon, a die for movement, some dragon scales, and some other tokens. Each round of the game, players are going to, behind their shields, roll their dice. If you roll any of the dragon rage symbols, you have to keep them. But any of the other dice, if you want to, you can re-roll. And you can re-roll twice. Again, you have to keep the dragon symbols that you roll here, the dragon's rage symbols. Once everyone is done rolling, the whoever has the first player token is going to place their dice over here first. So let's say I'm the first person to place. I would put one die here I got for dragon rage would go here in the first spot. I have two shields I would put here in defense. I have one sword here for attack. I have a movement die that goes here and I have a villainy die that goes in that slot. This wild I could put anywhere so I'll put it with the villainy here. The next player goes. They have two of these dragon symbols on the dice, so that actually knocks me down because they have more. They only have one villainy, so that would go here. Two shields, but I already have two shields and I went first, so they'd go to the second spot. Two swords, that would knock me down, so they would place those dice there. The next player here has rolled three of these dragon rage symbols, so then we both get pushed down. Uh, only one villainy symbol, one shield, one movement, and one loot, and so on and so forth. If there's fewer than five or four players, there's going to be fewer spots, so it's possible that some players won't be able to put their dice on the board. Once we're finished with the dice, then we're going to resolve each of the different spots that are on the board. So in this, on defense, whoever's first can heal three of their wounds. As the game progresses, players are going to be getting wounds. You don't necessarily want wounds. You only have a certain number of hit points. If you have too many wounds, you're dead. You can still win the game, but you're not going to participate anymore. Here you can heal wounds, and whoever is first, or they can take this, where they're protected from getting any wounds and theft for the rest of that round. When we get to the Dragon's Rage, we'll turn over this card here. A certain number of wounds are given out to each player, depending where they are here. And in fact, you see the first player also gets a Dragon Scale. Then there's an event that happens, a better plan. The two players with the fewest villainy cards each draw one from their deck. There's also a Dragon Rage thing. If one of the heads of the dragon has been completely defeated, the dragon's enraged, and then this will happen at the bottom here too. And so there's different events and different amounts of wounds that will be turned over each round of the game. In Villainy, players are going to draw cards from their Villainy deck. They also can steal dragon scales from other players. These Villainy cards are going to be different per player. 
So here I'm showing you some of the cards here from this wonderful character here who has a double headed uh, Etten symbol here. He's Torlock the Unconquerable. Although if you lose with him, he'll have to change his name. But anyhow, many of these cards, it will tell you exactly when to play them. Play during the attack action step. If you're the first player to attack the dragon, the other players can't attack this round. But it costs two dragon scales to play it. Some cards are free to play. Some will cost, have like an optional thing here. So here I can do whatever it says here on the main spot. And then I can pay a dragon scale to do an extra wound. I can attack somebody else. So you're going to draw these cards and play them when you want to. They're going to do various events. Under loot, players are going to draw treasure cards. So on the loot spot here, the first person draws two treasure cards and keeps one, or sometimes you can take dragon scales instead. Treasure cards you can usually keep secret. They're going to be worth victory points at the end of the game. And some of them are one-time use, where you can use them here. No one else can attack this round. The problem is, if you use a one-time use card, you don't get points for it at the end of the game. Some, though, you can use every turn, but they're going to cost dragon scales to play them, but then they give you special abilities, like the Cursed Ape and the Soulfire Sword. Attacking is going to let you attack the dragon. I'll explain that in a moment with a certain number of dice. And then fling is going to let you run from the dragon. When attacking a dragon, you're going to roll a certain number of dice based on the attack that you have. These are attack dice. Now, when you roll attack dice, it's the same thing. You have to keep these red symbols, and you might as well keep the sword symbols. And you can re-roll up to two times. All righty. You will then divide the number of symbols here of the dragon's rage, and that is, you divide it by two, and that's how many wounds you get. So here I would get two wounds. And then you divide your swords by two, rounding up, and that's how many wounds you do to the dragon. So here I do two wounds to the dragon. I can wound any head I want. So I could take a red and a blue cube, or I could take two yellows, up to me. You put those behind your screen. When all the cubes of one color are gone, that head has been defeated. When all the cubes from all three colors are gone, the dragon's been defeated. When players flee, they're going to roll this movement die, which has numbers on it from one to three. Uh, the one person will get to add one to the movement die, etc. When you move, you can move up to that number. So if I got three, I might only go two if I want to, but I can go all three. If, and so this is where you're going to be running out and getting out the exit. If someone escapes the dungeon, the game will also end. When you land on a space, though, it will let you do different things. Heal wounds, draw villainy cards, draw, pay a dragon scale to draw treasure cards, attack the dragon with four dice. So you're going to have various spots that you'll move, and you're trying to escape. So the game ends in three ways. If the dragon's defeated, if everyone is killed, or if someone escapes. At the end of the game, you're going to get points. One victory point for every wound that you have hit the dragon for. Every two dragon scales a victory point. Every villainy card you haven't used a victory point. These are both useful in the game, so these are just bonuses. Treasure cards will give you bonus victory points that are on them. You also lose a victory point for every wound, including poisonous wounds that can't be healed that you've got over the course of the game. Then it depends on if you escape from the dungeon, then whoever escaped is going to get 10 victory points. And the person who owns second place, closest to the exit, will get five. And the slowest person will get lose five points. Uh, if the dragon's killed, whoever killed the dragon is going to get victory points, which here says ten, but it's actually three. And the weakling and the coward, the person closest to the exit, and the person who did the fewest victory points will both lose five victory points. Also, whoever did the most damage to each of the heads, regardless of which way is done, will get these victory points six and three for having the most red cubes, most yellow cubes, and most blue cubes. Now, it doesn't matter if you escaped, it's down to whoever has the most victory points, and so you could not be the one who escapes and stayed and fought the dragon and still win even if another player escapes, but getting like those 10 extra bonus points certainly doesn't hurt. There are five villains here in the game. We have Grimvale the Undying, and he has uh, different cards in his deck that are essentially uh, summon the dead, or wrath minions that he can uh, put out that can help do extra damage, sometimes absorb damage for him. Torlock the Unconquerable is going to mess with the other players. The spider lady here, Sav Sav Savathine, the spider assassin, can do poison damage to other players, which can't be healed. Meserax, the Mindbender, he's very similar to the color blue in Magic the Gathering, messes with other players, does all kinds of weird things. And Tatiana, the Queen of the Vampires, has kind of like 
life-sucking ability. She can do damage and heal herself at the same time. I really like the artwork for this game. I love how the board looks. Uh, just bright and colorful. Uh, I like that the different treasures are here. Um, I, again, it just has like almost like a Disney-esque vibe to it and the different cards, the different characters. The miniatures are fine. I mean, I know they're pretty sturdy. They're very easy to tell apart and they're different colors. The cubes, the dragon scales especially, really like these things are nice and plastic. They feel great. The dice are okay. Um, I don't know yeah, how much these will wear in tarot time. It feels like they might wear off if you use them a lot. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, they are pretty easy to see what the symbols are, especially the attack die. The only die I specifically don't like is the movement die because the number is so small on it here. Um, it might just be easier to roll a six-sided die and divide it by two. But other than that dice, I really like the rest of the game. Everything fits very nicely in a molded plastic tray. A month or so ago, we did a top 10 list on our top 10 Take That games. I don't know how this one slipped my mind because this would be very high up in there. This is a game that is just silly fun. This is not a game for everyone, I know that, but for those who it's for are going to have a hilarious time. This is a game where you're going to be constantly messing with other players, stealing from them, attacking them. You get to roll dice and like Yahtzee style and there's just it's just full of rollicking fun. So this is what I would play instead of, say, Munchkin or something like that, because this gives me that same feel. It's just the silliness, the zaniness, but I feel like there's actually strategy and good choices to be made in this game. You roll the dice, so that push your luck aspect, you roll, I'm like, ah, should I keep this roll or should I roll some more? Possibly rolling too many of those symbols. What am I gonna go for? Do I go for the shields and constantly be healing myself? Well, that does, that's good, it keeps you in the game, but uh, maybe I want to try to win. So am I going to attack the dragon or am I going to run? Those are your two main choices. Or you can do a little bit of each. Try to keep a foot in both camps, if you will. And it kind of works. And when you attack the dragon, are you going for area majorities? Are you going to try to just take out the other players? Now, players have a certain number of hit points. It is not common for somebody to die. And if you do die, the game is probably almost over anyway. So it's not necessarily player elimination. In fact, you're not eliminated from the game. You can still possibly win, even if you die. And sometimes I played a game where someone died at the very end. They didn't care. They were fighting the dragon. And the game ends instantly when the dragon's defeated or someone escapes. And I like those two options. There are ways to slow other players down when they're running. There's, if someone's killing the dragon, maybe you'll stop running and turn around and start fighting the dragon too so that you don't, you know, you don't want to be that person who's running out the door and everyone else fought the dragon or vice versa. Now, at the same time, I don't want to pretend that this game is deep thinking. It's not. Each turn, it plays really quickly. You roll the dice behind your shield. Roll, re-roll, roll. You place the dice out there. Now that's kind of a dangerous thing sometimes, right? Especially with the wild dice. Three of the dice have a wild side. Where do you put those? Because you choose as you put them out. So going last lets you see what everyone else has done, but also going last sometimes means if there's a tie, you're not going to win that tie. So you're gonna go, you, you might get the lesser actions as things go down. I think the game scales pretty well. I initially thought it was best with five, but three works really well too. The five, you, there's more fighting and interaction and the chance of someone dying is higher probably and the dragon there's all kinds of zaniness going on but three is a little bit more focused and with three there's again you it's it's easier to watch what all the other players are doing the dragon scales is its own economy and then there's another thing i really like about this is the asymmetrical nature that's what drew me to the game in the first place the first time i played it uh each character just has a very different feel. Those villainy cards are special cards that you can get. You can't just play them willy-nilly. You have to get dragon scales to play a lot of them. You have to take time to get them. So, th And if you're doing all that, you may not be attacking the dragon. Sometimes I just want to play games that are wholeheartedly fun. And the idea of having a group of villains tripping each other, knocking each other down as they fight one big, even worse villain, I guess, the three-headed dragon. Or is he the hero here? I'm not quite sure. I don't know. And this game takes about an hour to play. There's going to be a lot of laughter, a lot of silliness around, and it can end in multiple ways. That's why I wanted this game to be in Dice Tower Essentials, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!
Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.